Hey everyone, welcome to The Beer Show, where we discover amazing craft breweries throughout Ontario. Today we're at Block 3 Brewing Company in St. Jacobs. I'm your host, Scott Willard, and beside me is the founder of Brick Brewing Company, the OG to the craft beer industry, Mr. Jim Brickman. Uh, what exactly is an OG other than original gravity? Oh, Jim, That's a beer it's joke. authentic, it's old school. <laughs> That's you, my friend. <laughs> but what does OG stand for? You're the original gangster. So prohibitions come back? I think so, maybe. Let's hope not, though. Oh my god. Let's go have a beer. Everybody, we made it in the brewery at Block 3 here. I got a nice cold glass of beer on this cold, beautiful patio. Uh, Block 3 is nestled in the awesome village of St. Jacob's, right off the main street. Uh, a great community brewery. Beer family is what I like to call it here. Uh, opened up just over six years ago by four really good friends. Um, and they've just expanded over the years and have gotten really, really well at what they're doing. So today we're gonna go in and we're gonna talk to one of the owners, Graham Spence, and the head brewer, Kevin Freer. Let's go look for him. Hey, Kevin. How you doing, Scott? Good, how are you? Good, yeah. Hey, Scott. Graham, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, good. Well, Graham, thanks for having us here at the brewery today. Um, obviously, every brewery has a story. So tell us, what, what is your story? What, like, what got you to where you are right now? Yeah, I mean, uh, we started, uh, our story started, I guess, six years ago. Uh, we started uh, kind of homebrewing in a, in, a, in a garage with the, uh, you know, the idea of, you know, starting something in St. Jacob's. And, it kind of evolved to what it is now. Uh, there was four of us at that, at that time. Uh, uh, myself, uh, Derek Lieber, Phil Hipkiss, and uh, Brian Maher. And Brian was our, uh, our brewery, he was working at another brewery as well. So I had, had the background there, and then we had the, I guess, uh, the business background. So yeah, that's kind of where it started. And, here we are. Being in the little town of St. Jacobs, I love the stuff. Personally, I love the stuff. The village, the village. The village, village not on. the town, the village. But I love the stuff that you guys have done for the community. You've given so much back for the community. Um, I know your Blocktoberfest event that you do every year, you give back. What are some of the things you've given back to locally? There's a lot, like we do uh, the annual like Face for Radio beer with Mike Farwell. Yeah. Where he, he's raising funds uh, for his uh, cystic fibrosis. Your Super Bowl party that you Yeah, my every, Super Bowl party, that's right. Uh, I don't know, yeah, I mean, there's, giving back is one of the things that, you know, we believe in. So yeah. uh, if we're able to, it's something that we like to do. And, yeah, it's awesome. Like you've done some really great stuff for the food bank. Um, the new mammography unit at Freeport Hospital was one that I was involved with with you guys, and it was fantastic. I love the fact that you guys keep everything in the community and you help people out as you can. Um, another big thing for me with craft breweries, other than the amazing beer that everybody puts out, such as you guys, is the branding. I love branding, and your guys' branding is exceptional. I love your logos. I love the labels on the beer. Who, like, who came up with the, your Block 3 logo and and uh, who does your labels for you? Opening up, it was, uh, you know, I think the hardest part is like naming beers and you know coming up with the name and branding and going through like the township's website that, the, well, well, which township used to, it was like Block 3 of, uh, of the of the land. I was like, oh, that's kind of kind of cool. Has a this little, little section, yeah. Little, little ring to it, so then we kind of, roll with that and it's sweet to be honest for the the, the branding it just kind of kind of happened. Graham you got a great place here. Well, thank you. Um, so you started uh, there was four of you four partners I know you talked about this earlier. Yeah. So did you just start by sitting down and having about 15 beers each and then ah, kind of. Not that many. No, no, yeah, oh it, I'm it, disappointed. It, yeah no it did start like that yeah we were kind of 
uh, we kind of get together and have uh, some beers and said, hey, like there's no one really do, doing anything like that in, in this area. Right. Uh, so like why not? Why not us, right? So, yeah. So you're happy with the spot? Um, it's a nice location being right downtown. What, yeah. Um, you know, you're in your sixth year. Yeah. And uh, so I'm sure there's been highs and lows as you went through the the uh, history of your place. It's crazy now when you think that we were, you know, one of the early craft breweries that uh, opened in Ontario and we're only six years old, right? So yeah. I think the, you know, the distribution model that, that the province has is kind of not where it needs to be for, you know, it doesn't really do much for, for breweries to, to help them grow and, and, uh, and excel. Now you have a, um, a pretty nice, as you can hear in the background, a nice little hospitality clientele yeah um, not to date myself but in the 80s we would only be allowed to have a hospitality room or a sampling room as it was called and the government the provincial government was kind enough to give us permission to give our beer away which was nice yes lovely and uh, at the same time they took taxes we gave it away so it was uh, quite a world back in the 80s but now that's got to be a nice uh, revenue generator. For, for sure, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I think, I don't know when it started, but it's, it's called the Buy the Glass license. So right. it, I think any manufacturer is able to uh, apply for that license uh, for, their te for their manufacturing facility. And it's nice. I mean, it, you know, I remember going to some of those places like that where you get to the hospitality rooms and it always felt weird that you couldn't grab a beer at the right. at the place that you're, yeah. that, yeah. that makes it. And yeah. it's kind of... So it's a nice change of that. Yeah, that, that we've that, come a long way. Yeah, I mean, we still got a long way to go, but yeah, uh, we have come a long way in, uh, in the last like 10 years, I think. So, well, it's so important. I mean, one thing about a hospitality room and the arrangement you have here is just, uh, you know, just having that contact with your customer, right? For sure. Yeah. And you, you know, hopefully get the, the good and the bad comes with it, right? So that, you know, you can kind of learn and. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially when you're trying to experiment with various different styles of beers, that you get a, a chance to get some feedback. So yeah, I mean, I, mean, I think with all the the breweries in the, in the province now, it's uh, you know distribution like big distribution breweries aren't really you know the, no, the norm, right? They're kind of the the minority. So it's, you know some like the, most people or most breweries, their major revenue source is actually probably out of their tap room. Right. Yeah. So your distribution is where? It's uh, obviously here. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, through the liquor store? Yeah, we've got, uh, mostly, it's mostly local, uh, within the Waterloo region. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have three beers in the LCBO, our King mm -hmm. Street Saison, our Beauty in the Belgian, and Fickle Mistress. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we do, uh, you know, a few bars and restaurants around, around the area as well. So how do you find distribution, I mean, for, as, a, as a smaller player? It's tough, but I mean, we're, we're lo mostly local as, as our, as our uh, you know, radio for where beer goes. So we uh, we've got a couple of beers in the LCBO, so our King Street Saison, our Beauty in the Belgian, and our Fickle Mistress. And then uh, we do those are your workhorse. Yeah, kind of mainstay yeah, beers. Sure. Yeah. They, and then yeah. Uh, we do uh, a little bit with the, the beer store locally. They again, you were saying earlier that province or provinces let gifted us the seven free stores from the beer store. So right, nice. Thing. We took advantage of that. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, we do a, li uh, a, bit, a little bit as well to bars and restaurants locally. Somebody asked me, you know, if I suffered from uh, sonocelia phobia. Have you ever heard of that term before? No. Well, I hadn't either, but I think this whole room's full of them. But it's a fear of an empty glass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're working Have on you ever it right now, here, right? I, I, <laughs> And I thought, my God, the whole world's got this phobia, yeah. so, most of us anyway. But anyway, I think you've done a great job here and staying power is a big deal. For sure, yeah. And uh, it's not cheap. A lot of people look at breweries as, geez, what a fun gig. But it's a business, right? You can win all sorts of awards for your beers. But in hindsight, when I look at, you know, it really doesn't mean anything to the customer. It means a lot to you and your brewers, but yeah. At the end of the day, it's uh, volume. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we always say that, like, yeah, you can win, you know, have the best beer in the world, but if no one's coming to try it, then what does it matter? Exactly. Right. So exactly. We, so you've got to balance sort of, you know, your your workhorses, as I call them, the ones that's an everyday one, and then, <laughs> then you you also obviously want to be artistic and be able to be creative. And, for sure. 
and uh, try out all sorts of different things, which is, that's the fun part. Yes. So. so Graham, I love everything you do here. I love the beer, I love your branding, I love the beer community or the beer family that's been created at this brewery and uh, yeah, you guys are going to be here for a long time to come and I know I'll be coming through that door often. Well, awesome, we appreciate you know people like you that support us and you know, we, I think we built a nice sense of community. So how long have you had that beard? Yeah. <laughs> I've had this beard for about uh, seven or eight years. I think it's a prerequisite for the it job, right? It's a right? craft beer look, yeah, yeah. no question about it. <laughs> so this is sort of the hall of history, right? Because you can kind of look at the size of tanks yeah. you originally had and, and where you had to go. To. Yeah, so uh, going back to the beginning, we only had these first three here, and then uh, we've grown kind of organically just as, as the production needs have warranted, and now, yeah. now we're up to... 10 tanks and yeah, each and one growing. of these. Yeah, and growing. That's great. So uh, when you started, I guess uh, it, it, the tanks, you probably could have had 10 more. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, ran out of beer first day open, so. Well, that's a good feeling. Yeah, right? <laughs> I know that feeling, that's great. So one of the cool things, Kevin, that you guys do here are these beautiful wooden barrels. Yeah. Um, predominantly, what is it? White wine, red wine, whiskey, what do you have? Uh, Kind of a mix. These ones right here are uh, a mixture of red wine and white wine barrels, usually from the Niagara region. Um, we don't do a ton of whiskey barrel aged stuff, but we have about 130 uh, red and white wine barrels. So 130 barrels, and, and predominantly what are you doing? Sours or just anything? What do you do? Yeah, mostly mixed fermentation, sour beers, um, a lot of Britannomyces, a lot of Lactobacillus. That kind of stuff. See, yeah. Kind of see where it goes. Yeah. That's good stuff. That's good stuff that they're doing here. I can trust tell you that. Um, I know you do a lot of collab brews, a lot of international collab brews. What are yeah. some of the breweries you've worked with, like from all over the world? Um, well, yeah. So recently, um, we had a beer with a friend of mine from Sweden. He has a brewery called Bready Fingers. So we actually harvested some wild tea uh, from northern Sweden, and we put it into a beer barrel fermented. Uh, we do, yeah. People like coming here and playing with the barrels and the oak and the mixed firm thing, so. It's awesome. Yeah. I love the funk and I love the bacteria. Yeah, milk the funk. Cheers. Cheers. So Jim, yes. beer review time. Yeah. Obviously based on color and glass, which you have a beautiful glass. I do, yeah. Very, Thank very you. different yeah. beers, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's taller than me. Yes, it is taller yeah. than you. But uh, yeah, so Kevin served you up something really awesome. Yes. Graham has served me up something really awesome. So I have the Hollinger Hellas. All right, here we go. We got our uh, Hollinger Hellas. It's our light German lager. It's uh, nice, easy drinking, uh, highly crushable. Which is a German style lager. Um, this is a beer that I think every brewery should have. And if it's done right, it's incredible. It's incredible. So, sort of your everyday beer. That's right. Yeah. That's right. A beer beer. Yes. Um, awesome golden color. Not much head to it. Simple, clean. Let's see how it is. Remember when Graham said that beer's crushable? Yeah. Yeah, that beer's crushable. <laughs> Malty, slight bitterness to it. So you could have more than one. Oh, you could have many of these. I can Look picture having you. about 10 of these on that patio. And, uh, <laughs> for you, yeah. no, I like your spirit. <laughs> good, very good. Just um, a nice, so, it's a nice clean beer. And that's what you want these days. Yep. Yes, and something that's quaffable and refreshing. And this thing weighs in at four and a half percent, which makes it that brushable. Yeah. yeah. What do you have? This is Mauve, it's one of our Oak Age Sour Beers, six and a half percent, with uh, about 300 pounds of raspberries for the batch. Well, I'm having a sour, which is probably uh, the brewer's worst nightmare. <laughs> uh, but I love sours, I've always loved sours. And um, See, and I was surprised when you told me that because back in your day, nobody did anything like that. 
Well, back in our day, uh, there wasn't a lot of people doing much of anything. No, exactly. So, you know, whatever you came out, it was okay, right? So, but uh, no, sours are, are, um, are interesting because it's, um, the reason why it's a bit of a, it scares a brewer is it's wild yeast you're using. So it's like, you know, a whole bunch of people crashing a party, right? And, you know, you don't know where it's going to go because it's uh, intruders. Yeah. And so it's mother nature just doing with whatever's around and it comes up with a great beer. And this is how beers were done way back when yep. because they didn't have temperature control or refrigeration or anything. So it was just let it happen. Yep. And these things come out beautifully. If, um, so if what's this one called? Mauve. Mauve. Yeah. And it is? And hence the color. Look at that. Yeah. Wow. And it's fruited with? Raspberries, Rasp which come through beautifully. It's like a farmer's market raspberry. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. Got a nice bite to it. Um, it's perfect for around eight o'clock in the morning with breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> Little breakfast Maybe. beer, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 I think a lot of people with sours, they hear the word sour and, and they get deterred. But it's it's more tart than sour, correct? I guess, but you know, when you look at how many Skittle sours are sold in the world today. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, there is a, a, a big market for something sour yep. and it's growing. So. Yeah, and I, and I know the boys here at Block 3 do some phenomenal sours. I think they have five on the board right now. Um, this one obviously being a barrel aged sour and the other three are dry hop sours, uh, which is uh, their base, which is a fickle mistress dry hop sour. And they've done multiple rotations, I guess you can call it, of those sours. But yeah, you like that? Oh, it's great. It's good, and eh? experimenting yeah. is beautiful. So yeah. it, that's one thing. I mean, you don't know what you're going to get. Yeah. <laughs> so. Excellent. Well, cheers, Jim. Cheers, man. Another great review. Some yep. good beers. Yeah. So, Graham, I want to thank you for having us here today and uh, showcasing this beautiful space you have. Um, as you know, you were the guys that got me into the craft beer industry. Um, you guys have brought me on. I've done work with you guys. I've worked festivals. I love it. I appreciate it. Uh, you and I have become really good friends over the years. But uh, yeah, like you people need to come down and check out Block 3 in St. Jacobs if you haven't. It is a awesome family friendly environment. Yeah. Dog friendly. I don't know if anybody saw the dog wandering around behind us, but it's a dog friendly environment. But again, I want to thank you for having us. Cheers. Cheers to that. Quick sip. But not only does Block 3 have this little brewery in St. Jacobs, they also have just up the street, it's called the... The Village Beer Garden. And what do they have at the Village Beer Garden? Well, we have beer. Yeah. And then uh, we have, uh, it's a Mexican inspired menu there. So we Mexican got... inspired menu and you can also get cocktails. For those people that don't like beer, we know you're out there, we get it. But yeah, so do you want to head up and get a bite to eat? Let's go for it. Awesome. Cheers. Cheers.